Your father is still very much part of the memory mm. of Doctor Who. In fact, we still think of him as this character. People are rediscovering Doctor Who constantly, and I think of that he would be incredibly proud. I don't even know your name. Smith. Dr. John Smith. Were these in your house? Yeah, absolutely they were. I've got that one, in fact. I bought some of the original artwork from one of these annuals. Please tell me you've got this image on your living room wall of your father <laughs> telepathically attached to a kind of cobra oh, what is with, it? A, with a, with a uh, is it one of these of, um, No idea what's going on there whatsoever. But uh, yeah, no, we had these. These were, these were a Christmas must. The Who Mobile was, was definitely his idea and it was loosely based on a stingray. I used to go with my father to like open fates and um, supermarkets and things like that. He used to drive it down the motorway with great pride. And we, we were stopped many times by the police. And they go, oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Pope, just, uh, the, the lights aren't the uh, correct distance from the, 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 the lighting area to the floor. And my dad said, you just want to get in it, don't you? And they went, do, do you mind? And then get in it. Go, go on, my dad say like, go and push it, and go, and make the noise and stuff like that. But that was the whole thing about my dad's sort of interpretation of Doctor Who, wasn't it? That it was sort of the modern and the old, and the sort of the flamboyancy of Edwardian to the modern modernity of sort of modern science that he was really interested in the gadgetry that he did with everything else. But he liked his souvenirs of working on the programme, didn't he? He, he? he did. He liked his souvenirs, but not as much as I did. I was a proud owner of um, the, the crystal. I had the green death maggot. The head of it was a rotted ferret head, which I found fascinating as a young boy, that I'd go up to the special effects department and hang out with them. And they would somehow rot these ferret heads and stick them onto a sort of glove puppet body part and I had an Auton hand. I had the mutant mask, Bok, which was a, a, a diminutive gentleman in flippers, I seem to remember, because I was on set when they shot the, the demons, and I remember him running off and not being scared at all, because it made this kind of weird slapping sound when he ran. But his eyes used to glow, and um, I somehow, or my father helped me alleviate it from the set, the, the, the gargoyle that was made of uh, uh, sort of styrofoam. For some reason, I put it in my bedroom, as a very young boy with glowing red eyes. What did you do with the crystal? It was just a thing, I used to love it. It was just around, I had a hole at the top of my cupboard upstairs was full of this sort of paraphernalia. Because you know when you gaze into a blue crystal from Metabelis 3, things right. can happen. Do, do they? Shall we try it now? Oh my God, that's where it is, that's mine. We need to concentrate. Right. Oh. Something's happening. It is, there it goes. So, you see, Brigadier, my trip to Metabilis III wasn't wasted after all. Oh, good grief. So we're celebrating the centenary of John Pertwee's birth, the hundred years of the man. What should we do on that day to, to mark that? I don't know, wear Cuban heels and grow your hair big. You know, I mean, watch again some of his stuff and this has been the great experience about being with you and being with the team here and i've discovered so much about him that i never knew existed he had so much more to give and he was so full of life and i just i, I think he would be so incredibly proud of the fact that he is a sort of british icon can i say that you can yeah. he is and he's sorely missed and i love him <laughs>